I know what you're thinking. You're thinking the same thing I am. How long can it take these two doofuses to finish this song? Well, there's a lot going on. If I was at a hectic point in my semester, the last time you saw me talk to you, now it's even worse. And it's going to get worse yet. So there's a lot on my plate that is preventing me from being the full-time songwriter that I really would like to be. Suffice it to say, we are making progress, and you can find out what that is after you watch the show intro. Go get to it. It began as a dream with two kids in high school. There was a spark, magic, chemistry. Then life happened. But 30 years later, the fire was reignited. The band is back, better and badder than ever. They prolifically turn out new music, songs hitting the tops of the charts in various corners of the world. Rockin' You Since 82. Are your best. Trying to get some drum parts for the chorus. Uh, Mike sent me the uh, scratch demo uh, after he finished the last episode, which you can watch somewhere up here. Uh, and so I am trying to work out um, some drum parts uh, rather than just what he uh, dropped in there. So that's what I'm doing. I feel like I can do that. So I'm just trying to figure out a way to get him a, <sighs> I'm trying to figure out a way to get him the drum parts that I'm eventually going to play. It's kind of how we work. Um, he starts to assemble guitar parts and usually sends me stuff as a click track uh, with the guitar parts, guitar parts and a click track. Sometimes he'll dump in um, just drum samples that he's got from a completely other source, but I usually ask him to strip those out uh, unless what he's dropped in there is specifically what he's after. I usually ask him to strip that stuff out because I'm trying to play off of what the guitars are doing, whether it's a riff or whatever. The, usually the rhythm of what the guitars are playing. Um, and I'm also trying to let my kick drum emphasize what the bass line is doing. So what happens at that stage, once I have any portion of the song complete um, in the way he sends it to me, is that I figure out what I'm going to play, really just like he figures out what he's going to play. So he's figuring out chords and whatever. Um, I'm literally figuring out what I'm going to play. I like to go into the studio to cut tracks knowing my part the same way I would um, if I was playing piano or guitar or any kind of melody or harmony instrument. I like to know my part. I'm not particularly strong at just making stuff up on the fly. Um, and so I'm trying to figure out what my part's gonna be. Once I know what that part's gonna be, which I get by playing it, and I know I totally have two different drumsticks here. I have no idea where the other one of these is and thankfully, um, the drummer from Atomic Black threw this one to me uh, from the stage at the end of their show. Uh, one time I saw them opening for Kiss ages ago. <clears throat> anyway, I still have two. So I'm sitting here trying to air drum what I'm going to play. Once I figure out what that is, I will enter it into Finale, which is just a notation program. And then I can ship those audio files to him he can dump those in the DAW and do like a little bit of 
I'm going to say pre-mastering or pre-mixing, and that's totally not the right way to say it, but you can set some levels with those and get the song sounding right. And usually at that point, I have a good sense of, yes, this definitely works, or eh, this is a little sketchy. Um, maybe I need to rethink what I've done. So it lets me hear my part against his parts um, when things are pretty well balanced. From that point, I will actually go into cut the drum tracks on the drums themselves. I'll go in and cut the drum tracks not listening to a click track. I actually listen to myself playing um, the audio files I exported to him uh, from Finale. So I'm literally listening to what I intend to play and I'm just playing right along with that. It's kind of like playing along with perfectly in sync like with another drummer who just happens to be me come through Finale. Anyway, so I'm thinking about in that um, I'm thinking about in that chorus doing a four on the snare for two measures. So like crack, 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 crack. crack. This is like uh, probably my tom two. One, two, three, four. This is probably tom two. Crack, 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 crash. And I don't want a one there. So crash. Then I'd go down to my first floor tom, tom three and just do um, a steady four there and go to two and four on the snare. Back to this, crack, 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 crack. And then it drops down there for Bloody Mary, so I might go down to this tom. I don't know, I have to work some of that out, but that's what you sort of caught me doing. I'm like, I'm, I'm just sitting here doing this stuff and getting ready to enter some notation in um, so we can get a little bit further along, at least in terms of the completeness of the sound of this uh, tune, um, and thought I would just cut you in uh, and let you see a little bit what that's like. So this is me sitting in my office with mismatched drumsticks trying to work out what the hell it is I'm actually going to play. So I'm going to keep doing this, um, and then I'll probably pop back in and talk about some of the um, other stuff uh, that Mike had going on. So, a uh, clicker, uh, and I will see you later, or a little bit, or tomorrow, or for all I know, next week. I don't know, but I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I just came up with a thing. Mike was even talking about this um, in his segment about um, do we just go straight out of the second chorus into that break? <laughs> the hell ever um and so he's getting down you know bloody mary bloody mary gore is her delight three four so gore is her delight two three four i don't know what i'm doing with these uh i'm scattered today today <laughs> um but he's got that extra measure so um Bloody Mary, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. But that last melody note that he's on is an E flat. It's an E flat. So he's already there, and this starts on the same pitch. So rather than have all of that um, extra two, three, four in there, I think we should cut off that last measure of the second chorus so that it's 15 measures instead of 16 and just go straight into Bloody Mary, two, three, four, gore is her delight. Wherever we go from there. That's what we should do. So take it, bank it. I'm putting in drum parts um, and I got to go to class soon. So this is probably it for me today. Next time you see me, new shirt. Ooh, I hope a new shirt. All right, later. Told you I'd be back. Told you I'd probably have a different shirt on. Told you it would probably be a couple days later. And so it is. I don't have a lot else to say um, about the tune at this point. Um, I think we're making good steady progress. Um, I spent some time after last I spoke uh, to you 
doing some more note entry for drum set parts, um, becoming more and more convinced that I'm probably going to need to invest in a double bass drum pedal. Um, there's just a couple of things that I want to use that kind of sound for. Um, one spot in this song and then another song that's a ways over the horizon. So it's not something I plan to use all the time, um, but I think I'm coming around to the notion that having that in my arsenal would be of value. So um, anyway, I, I feel like we're doing all right. Um, I'm looking at some notes here on my computer that I made um, from Mike's last entry into what we did. Um, and he was uh, talking about how he liked, we're gonna go with that sequence for the break. Um, the ba -na 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 and then just sequencing the whole thing down a half step. So sounds good. Um, he did a really cool thing then um, with the jaran 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 that I suggested. Um, he uh, he said it was a little, um, I guess, just repetitive to let it hang out on that A uh, chord. And so he moved it around a little bit. And I liked a lot what he came up with. Um, the fact that he's moving around in half steps um, kind of emulates the half step ideas from the break itself. So we've got the da -na 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 -na, those are all half steps. And then he's going da -na 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 so always dropping in half steps. Um, so I think that's a good tie together, and it is a lot more interesting than um, just hanging out on the A that I did. Um, he had written, um, we, he, he hadn't written, he said, and I wrote here, that we end on that E and then go back down to an A for the chorus. I don't know if he's just misspeaking there or thinking the chorus starts on an A, um, but it actually begins on a D. You can't see me, I'm over here at the piano. Bloody Mary! And then it goes down to the A. So <clears throat> I think that sounds fine though. Um, the, the E to the A would be like a dominant to tonic movement, um, or five to one. The D, the E down to the D, and from there down to the A is just like five, four, one, which is great. That's the blues. So I think it works fine. But just to make sure that we're actually still starting the chord or S uh, on a D. <clears throat> anyway, then, um, the last thing I just want to comment on is that when he did that, um, dun -un, dun -un, dun -un, dun -un, dun -un, dun -un, he's actually sort of speaking over top of that or through that, that old break um, set of lyrics um, that I thought we had both decided didn't actually work all that well or wasn't the right thing. Um, the stuff about, um, you know, twill never last and that stuff. So he um, put that back in and, uh, you know, it's fine. I, if, um, if we're going to use those words, I actually do like them in that newish little section that we've got in there. Um, so, you know, we can go with that. Um, we can continue to work that. That can be something for the next one. Um, but I think we're in a good spot. Um, and that's really all I've got for today. I am, uh, it's dark and cold and kind of spitting rain off and on, and uh, I've just got a bunch of school crap to do. So I'm going to sign off for this right now, and um, I think his intent is to interweave the two of us for this episode anyway, so I will let him go ahead and do uh, all of the encouragements about subscribing and liking and commenting and all of those things that really drive um, <sighs> traffic, drive traffic to the channel. So that's it for me. Um, and I will see you on the flip side. Boom. Thanks, Scott. So, uh, a lot of stuff covered today, uh, from Scott and I'm just sitting here in the studio now pondering some of the stuff that he said, um, but also, uh, thinking about some of the holes that we have. So I know one of the first things that I need to do is to take, 
excuse me, take this track and give it to him with just the click and with no drums in it um, so that he can be working on that. So I need to get that done. I also really, really like what Scott did um, taking out that four beats between the end of the second chorus and the break um, so that we go right into that do-do-do-do-do-do-do stuff. Uh, so I'm going to accomplish that. But the thing I really want to accomplish um, is to give more in the parts that we're missing. So when we get into here, coming out of the chorus here. I really want to work out a bass line for that. So that's what I'm going to spend my time on because it's really time in this song um, to spend some time putting more meat on the skeleton. So I'm going to grab the bass guitar, get that tuned up. Uh, also going to work on taking those four beats out here. So I want to work on that a little bit and get rid of that hold. Two, three, four, one. So those four beats need to be taken out. I also need to, and I probably won't do this on the episode, I think there's a spot in there somewhere where I actually did five beats instead of four when I was splicing things together because a lot of this is just stitching and sewing uh, when you're doing a scratch demo like this or a composition demo, however you want to word it. So I need to look at that and determine if I did that. But that's not necessarily going to happen here on camera. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is do what he said and take this and cut those tracks out and fit that together so that those four beats are missing because that needs to happen. Oh, that was a pain in the butt. You would think just cutting out four measures would be easy, but um, it took a while to get things moved around. So here we go. So that works well. I just realized though that I uh, cut the guitar back so I could hear and I didn't fill it back over where it belongs. So we got a little gap there. So let's pull that back ish like that. Okay. And one more little thing. Sorry, you're just watching me do something you can't see. Okay, there we go. Okay, that works good. Okay, so now I want to work on that bass part that we were talking about. So let me grab my bass guitar and you got to do that because you can't write music if you can't go. Remember that from our last episode? I told you that. I want to kind of sort of keep up with the walking bass line that we have here. So let me just play a little of that. So I want to kind of keep that thought, but change it up a little bit. So I'm thinking about, she's bloody man. Oops, it helps if you like, don't mute the track. That you're gonna... So I'm going to cut that in and we'll hear what that sounds like. You might as well just watch. Oops. <laughs> oh, ah, 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 oh. There we go. It's okay, McFly.
So, I forgot to hit record, so we'll get to do that again. I got it done. There's a couple of mistakes in there, but uh, no big deal. Uh, again, for a scratch track, close enough for now. Let's uh, see what we listen here, see what we got. <laughs> is off a little bit but you get the idea so that's going to work so the next thing I want to do now is fill that in in the next spot and then we're gonna go ahead and work on the break and I've got some pretty good ideas for that as well all right so we're gonna do the cut in and then we'll go into that break and hopefully this time I remember to actually record the thing. <laughs> And from there it goes back into the the chorus so I gotta think about that for a minute but it works so let me review that real quick I, I like it and I've changed the way I do this one part a little bit so when we're going uh, So it's going to work really well. I'm going to go ahead and cut that in, get it all fixed up, and I'll be right back. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. We got it. So let's listen to that uh, second chorus through the outro to the end of the song and hear what it sounds like. <laughs>
talk about the lyrics here. So that continues on through the fade out. So we're getting there. Um, so those lyrics, uh, I didn't say anything to Scott because I'm rethinking that particular area of lyric. I like some of it. I don't like all of it. But I have not taken time to really focus on this. This is actually the first uh, spare minutes that I've had to sit down in the studio or, or even think about this song for the last two weeks probably. We didn't even get this video out last week. We put out a different music video, so uh, check that out up here. Um, just a uh, took some live tracks, polished them up a little bit from a Founders show that we did when it's just Scott and I playing tracks, and that's what you got there. So anyway, uh, I got that out last week in place of this because I just was not able to get in here and get stuff done. It's been crazy, but... I think life is starting to settle down now. I hope. Um, so we got the baseline cut. So what I'm going to do next, I'm not going to cut this all in for you to hear. I want to wait until we get scratch drums from Scott, or maybe we'll even get studio drums. So we might have that done by next time. We'll see. And um, I know he's working on the drums. The, the, the I like where the lyrics are. I do and I like some of the words, but I think we can do better than that. So we will take that turd and polish it up into a gorgeous ball of shiny poo and see what we give to you. <laughs> I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, a lot more ground covered. He went into nitty gritty details and I just needed to crank out some more meat and potatoes. Uh, we took out that four bars. That's good. There's a couple spots we need to go through and count and make sure that I didn't add an extra beat because I really like to work in five and seven and nine and it's easy for me to fall into that. And uh, he'll... My fingers if I did. Um... So that's it. So we're going to send this scratch track off without the drums to Scott. So he'll have it for our next episode. And maybe we will get some of the... I'm not a drummer and I don't play one on YouTube. So that's it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do hit the bell so you receive notifications. Smash that like button down there and drop comments. That's very important to help us get more followers here. Uh, to put us up in the algorithm so that we get uh, in the recommended list for people who are interested in songwriting and things like that. Uh, we are on Facebook, forward slash Iron Fist Online. We are on Instagram, forward slash Iron Fist underscore online. Uh, join us over there. We have discussion. There's all kinds of history stuff going on over there uh, where we share stuff from the past as well. We want to hear from you. You guys rock and uh, we will continue to rock and roll all night and party. At no, that's not going to work either. Anyway, let's join us here together in next week for more in the songwriting series. In the meantime, check out a lot of other stuff on our channel. Spread the word. You are the Fist family and you rock.